What's going on Reefers, Blaine here. In today's video, we are heading down south to Fort Myers and checking out the Imaginarium Science Center. The reason we're down there is we are installing a brand new touch tank for stingrays. It's gonna be a really fun video, but before we get into that though, I wanna say real quick, we are nearing 10,000 subscribers here on the YouTube channel, and it would be amazing if you guys head down below and smash that subscribe button. Before we get into the details of the stingray tank, let's go ahead and get some updates of the studio tanks. With the Red Sea tank now up in cycling, we thought what better time than now to add in some cycled media from the farm, and on top of that found some choice pieces of live rock from the sumps throughout the farm. Having this readily available cycled media on site helps make this process more seamless and helps grow the overall biodiversity of the tank in a much quicker manner. After the media was selected, a quick inspection was done, then it was time to configure a space down in the sump below. The best course of actions we thought as a team would be to make an egg crate shelf so that way we could add in live rock and a power head below to help keep any detritus suspended in the water column. Evan measured things out and got to building a shelf. As for the bio balls, we added them into a mesh bag and set them directly into the sump where the flow of the wave maker would be hitting them directly. A couple pieces of coralline added onto the rock work and a couple bio balls into the sand and the cycle for the reefer continues. Truly can't wait to watch this system develop. Thought I'd give you all a little update on what's going on with the Innovative Marine 15 gallon. As you guys saw in a previous video, we've got a pair of clownfish inside. They're doing well, they're eating, they seem to be really happy. I will say though, one of the clowns ended up hopping out and going into the back chamber of the Innovative Marine. It made it a total struggle to get the clown out, but finally we were able to get it out, got them reintroduced together. They ended up squabbling a little bit, fighting for a little bit of time, but now they're all back together and happy and go lucky. The coral in the tank's doing well, and I think in the upcoming videos, we'll be adding in some more test corals to this tank. So definitely stay tuned as we add in more corals and get this nano to develop. We are planning on tossing a drop down VCA adapter to help lower the return nozzle below one of these arching arms to allow for more flow in this nano tank. Evan from the farm also mentioned we should try to also amp up the flow from the return pump. It'll be nice to be adding in some new pieces into the nano, especially now that we're ready and we've seen the one coral tester do well and it's time to add in more. Actually, at this point of me writing the script out and sharing this video, we've handpicked and placed a nice new group of corals into the tank. Now it's time to get into the Stingray tank. What's going on, Reefers? We're at the IMAG History and Science Center in Fort Myer, and right behind me is a touch pool tank we're actually currently working on. So we're currently getting everything plumbed out. We're working on getting the chiller plumbed out. We're gonna show you guys that entire process of we're getting this thing ready to roll. But what we're out here to do today is get this thing ready to go so that come Friday, they can fill it up, start the cycling process and get this thing ready to make it a nice cool touch tank out here at IMAG Science Center. Before we dive into filtration and all of that, let's talk about the vessel itself. The touch pool tank measures out to 24 feet long, 13 feet wide, and two feet tall, making the gallonage for it roughly 4,500 gallons. The six individual fiberglass pieces were brought in and fiberglassed in place before we arrived on site. This had to be done because it was too big to fit through the entryway and it was broken down into the six sections. Previously in this space was an old touch pool tank that was demoed down so that the new one could be put into its place. Showcasing another touch tank system on this channel, but this one at a much more massive scale and made specifically for housing rays. Once we were on site, the team had already gotten a good handful of work done and it was time to jump in. The filter system was all in place and the main plumbing work had already been laid. With this being a sand filter system, the sand needed to be making its way into the giant drum. This was one of the jobs Alex and myself tackled right as we got on site. The base layer was made up of pea gravel and on top of that was a nice fine layer of pool filter sand. After the main drum filter was all set, we moved over to the RK2 fluid sand filter body and got the specific media added directly in. With those two tasks done, the filter system was almost complete with just a few minor plumbing things that needed to be handled before the startup of the tank. Unlike some of the installs you've seen on the channel previously, this plumbing job was designed to be much more functional in the regards to the needs of a public facility. The floor was cut to lay the return and intake plumbing from the filter so that way it could be covered post completion and that way people would have the ability to get access 360 degrees around the touch tank. 
The facility had also mentioned that come startup, they would get custom framework done around the plumbing so that way they could mitigate any issues from the public getting close and tampering with things. All right, here is the touch pool tank as it sits. The fiberglass has just recently been put together. This thing came in several pieces so that it could get in through the building and get here to the IMAG History and Science Center. Once they've gotten them all the pieces here, they fiber class it, they've gotten it together. They're gonna to be cleaning it out and come Friday, they're gonna be filling it up. What we're doing today though is we're finishing up all of the plumbing. So we have this nice sand filter system in the back. Everybody's kind of working on currently the chiller plumbing lines up top and all of the filtration is gonna be tucked in this back corner, nice sand filter setup. But as for the tank itself, the system, we're gonna have the plumbing coming through from the filtration. The return will come right here at the back end, creating a nice circular flow in the system. And as you can see, there's some nice intake slots set up here where they're not gonna to be too big, where the stingrays will get stuck in between them. So quite the interesting system that we have going here. We're getting everything plumbed out and we're getting it ready to roll. Some of the last major piping that needed to be laid was up top that helped run the source of fresh and salt water to the touch tank, as well as a line that will be running to the chiller to help maintain the temperature during the warmer months. A lot of interesting plumbing work on this job due to the fact that it's a much more unique install and different from the normal aquarium setup. The system is all cleaned out. We've got it squeegeed, we've got it mopped out, and we're ready to go. We washed it down with RODI, and now it's time to start putting in the sand. This is obviously an important part of this build due to the creatures that we're planning on putting into the tank. They're gonna need a decently thick sand bed to live happy lives in this system. I was lucky enough to be the person inside the tank placing all the bags throughout by hand. And we ended up using roughly two and a half pallets worth of carob sea sand, making that about 480 bags of sand in total. That was a lot of sand. And just like that, we have laid out the entire layer of sand. As you guys can see, we're utilizing the same sand we end up using on most of our projects, Carib C. We're gonna be utilizing the Fiji Pink on this entire touch tank, and this thing is full of sand. So we've gotten all the bags laid out. Now it's time to start breaking each one open, and of course, fishing out the little clarifying pack in each of these suckers. So gonna be quite the process of getting all this set up and ready to go. Once the bags were dumped, we raked out the sand to get a nice even spread and the sand layer was looking nice and it was ready for some water to be added. Just like that, we've got the last piece of plumbing in all plumbed up and we have all the sand inside the system. We ended up using two and a half pallets worth of carob sea sand to give ourselves a nice two to three inch layer here across the entire touch pond to give the stingrays a nice area to hang out and dig in and burrow. So looking really good, super excited. Last piece of plumbing though, and everything is looking super great in the C2C touch tanks. With a little bit of downtime in between things, I took the minute to walk around IMAG and ran into their section where their display tanks were. With a range of critters, there was at least about 10 different tanks in the room with reptiles, fish, and all kinds of different creatures. The one tank that caught my eye though was the Mohawk Battleship Inspired Display Tank. This tank was actually built back in June of 2016 by the infamous Tanked TV show. I had no idea about it before arriving on site and was quite shocked to find out more about it once I was in front of the tank. As it sits now, the tank could maybe use some different lighting and maybe reintroduction of some new fish, but overall looks pretty good for being up and running since 2016 and in my opinion is quite the unique display. It was fun getting the chance to walk around and see what IMAG has to offer, but let's go ahead and get back to the touch tank. Final plumbing was being glued and laid so that the system could finally start filling up. With the clean salt water line attached, it was time to start getting the tank wet. The facility was able to make up roughly 400 gallons of clean salt water before our arrival, but would need about 4,100 more gallons to fill the tank all the way up. It was a start though, and with the water being put into the system, it was time for us to call it a night and come back in the morning to button up final plumbing needs and head back north. With a couple final PVC sections to glue in the morning, things were all wrapped up for the filtration system and the touch tank was ready to go online once it was full. The team from IMAG was there bright and early to start making water and prepping things to begin filling again. I was lucky enough that one of the workers at IMAG, Carlos, was kind enough to send me some footage of the tank of how it sits now with it up and going. They've added in two yellow stingrays and two horseshoe crabs at this point. 
the center would love to add in a cow nose or two as well once they're able to get those specimens for the touch tank. Some woodwork has begun on the outer filtration and a cover for the floor will be ready soon. The filtration is up and rolling and it seems to be the perfect fit for the team here at IMAG. Overall, system looks great and I can't wait to see those cow noses in soon. And with that, we wrap up a very unique install video for the channel. If you enjoyed this one though, head over to our channel and check out all the other installation videos. I hope you guys enjoyed your New Year's and I'm really looking forward to all the amazing things we can do for the channel in 2024. Thanks so much for watching all the way till the end. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads.